Hi, when you've done a lot of trade trees, you've come across a lot of trades that, you know, two things. First, you just have an appreciation for the trades that allow a team to gather assets, trade those assets for future assets, and potentially land you a Great Cup championship. And if you're very good, you can land multiple Great Cup championships. We've done with the Edmonton Football Club in 1987 when they traded away Matt Dunnigan to the BC Lions. They used assets to collect the 1993 Grey Cup, the 2003 Grey Cup, and the 2005 Grey Cup. The Edmonton Football Club actually did it with another trade in episode 10. We're done talking about the Nilon Green trade, where it actually provided them multiple opportunities to collect assets to win the 2003 Grey Cup, and of course the 2005 Grey Cup. There's a lot of things here that we also have an appreciation for is that, yeah, the trades that become very good trade trees are, are great. But what if there's a little bit more? Maybe there's something that I'm missing. And sometimes it's not within the trade tree itself, but maybe there's something that came before the trade tree. For example, I was in episode one, I was talking about, I was going to talk about the Ricky Ray trade. I went one step back. It became the Stephen Giles trade tree, and then you follow the roots, and, and lo and behold, Winnipeg won a great cup because of it. I mean, it didn't lead to Winnipeg, it kind of, it kind of led to it. You know, players that follow, you follow the road, and it led to Winnipeg capturing its first great cup in 29 years. But sometimes, when you do your work, you do your extra work, and you come across a diamond in the rough. Now, now I could warn you that this could very on the lines of uh, repetitiveness because there's a good chunk of this trade tree that we've already dealt with and uh, if you really want to do some, do some of your homework go back to episode three in the carrie joseph saga and for that we are going to go on a little way back trip to the year 2005. what happened in 2005 well the winnipeg blue bombers went 5 and 13 finishing a very monstrous horrible season that actually started out pretty decent despite them starting out 0 and 4 but I digress. The Edmonton Football Club won their last Grey Cup before 2015 in 2005, and I actually am pretty proud of that moment because of the fact that that actually was the pinnacle of episode number five, and of course episode number 10 in our uh, CFL Trade Trees episodic program here on the CFL Trade, well, my episodic programming. Oh yeah, the Ottawa Renegades folded. It was the second time in 10 years that the experiment in Ottawa for the CFL just did not work. And in 2005, the CFL decided, hey, you're not being able to pay your bills. And Ottawa's found management said, no, we can't and we don't want to. And the CFL said, okay, well, let's have a dispersal draft. And what was cool about this is that all of a sudden, we could actually treat a draft in the CFL like it was NCAA college draft going into the NFL. Quarterbacks were up for grabs. And who was number one? Well, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Hamilton Tiger Cats were very bad in 2005. Spoiler alert, they were bad in 06 and 07, partly in 08. In fact, they didn't get back to respectability until Kevin Glenn was behind the center, and even then that was a question mark, but I digress. The Hamilton Tiger Cats actually made a big trade acquiring the franchise quarterback in Jason Moss. We talked about that in episode 5, by the way. So they didn't really have a need for a quarterback, and they didn't really have a need for a number one pick, right? Because, you know, who else is going to be picked in number one? It's not the college CFL draft where the best old lineman or best receiver is taken. No, this is actual football draft, so it's got to be a quarterback. Well, who was needing a quarterback at this time? Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So they reached over and they said, Hamilton, can we get that pick? And Hamilton said, yeah, but it's going to cost you. And so let's go to this week's trade trade. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders acquired the first overall pick in the 2006 dispersal draft. In exchange, the Hamilton Tiger Cats acquired a 2007 first round pick, Scott Gordon, and receiver slash returner slash running back Corey Holmes. All right, so we've dealt with the Saskatchewan side of things before, so it's actually quite easy. So let's go to the Saskatchewan side of things. At the first overall pick, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders select quarterback Kerry Joseph. What's interesting, because this will actually play 
play on further into the trade for this video. Third overall pick was actually Jason Armstead, a very elaborate and a very exciting electric returner in this time of this era in the CFL, and Saskatchewan was able to obtain him. And the fact that Armstead and Kerry Joseph had their chemistry in Ottawa, it seemed like a no-brainer. Well, in 2006 and 2007, Kerry Joseph was very good. In 2006, he had just over 3,500 yards passing. And in 2007, well, he had just over 4,100 yards passing. But Dots, how did Kerry Joseph get most outstanding player in 2007 with just 4,100 yards? Good question. It was because of the additional 800 yards on the ground and the 13 touchdowns that he had helping the Saskatchewan Rough Riders get into the postseason and finally winning the Grey Cup for the first time at this time in 18 years. There's your answer. Well, after 2007, winning the almost outstanding player, having a statue pretty much already set, Eric Tillman says, yeah, we're going to gamble and we're going to trade. And Gary Joseph was sent to the Toronto Argonauts in exchange for offensive lineman Glenn January, defensive lineman Ronald Clemens, a 2008 first round pick, and a 2010 second round pick. All right, so we've talked about this one already, so it's not really worthy to go into detail. Glenn January only played one year, didn't play up to snuff as far as the standard Saskatchewan has with their offensive lineman, signed as a free agent, so that ends there. Lionel Flemis is pretty interesting. Uh, after a couple of games, he was traded back to Toronto with a fifth round pick in 2011, which is actually used to select Gio, Julian Fioli Dino, and the Toronto Argonauts sent back receiver TJ Acre and the rights to Brian Smith. Brian Smith never played a game for the Saskatchewan Rumpfighters or the CFL in general. TJ Acre only played one game but had a severe foot injury and he finally gave it up after the 2008 season. So that actually ends pretty quickly there. The 2008 first round pick was used to select defensive lineman Keith Shulligan and he didn't really have that much of an impact on the 2013, but let's not pretend that he wasn't versatile and he wasn't important to their to their great cup championship up until 2013 didn't play a lot of games that 2013 season he was hell on wheels he was pretty much the prototypical canadian defensive tackle unfortunately for the riders he was one of two defensive linemen that they gave up and actually in the expansion draft to the cfl to ottawa red blacks so that branch ends there the 2010 second round pick well, we talked about the confusion, but lo and behold, it actually worked out to be that the Saskatchewan Rope Fighters sent their first in 2010 and this pick, as well as, as well as Jamie Borum to the Toronto Argonauts in exchange for the eighth overall pick and the first overall pick in 2010. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders used the eighth overall pick to select receiver Jeremy Sisko and the first overall pick to select linebacker Shamari Williams. Okay, so we... Really, I, I, I don't want to really want to comment on this because this is going to be a pro riders video. But usually, when you kind of trade up in the draft, you kind of hope to at least particularly pick a great player that has an impact. And I know people will say, "Well, the draft is such a crapshoot." Well, if it is, why are you trading up your valuable assets to move up to select a player that's not going to have that much of an impact? There's the argument. That's the most anti-rider thing I'm going to happen during this video. Let's go to the Hamilton Tiger Cats side. Now, I mentioned the Hamilton Tiger Cats weren't very a good team in 2006, 2007, 2008 on the field. Off the field, this trade tree would pretty much prove that they were a mess off the field to begin with, too, as well. The 2007 first round pick, the Tiger Cats selected defensive lineman J.P. Pekasek. Now, very good, reliable, versatile defensive tackle in Canadian debut. Unfortunately, by the time that he got his foot wet, and the fact that the Hamilton Tiger Cats, by the time that they became good, the Kaziak actually was a starter, became a starter, and left for free agency to the Montreal Alouettes. Retired after the 2012 season, that ends there. Safety, Scott Gordon. Okay, reliable special teams ace. That was not bad axe. asset that the Hamilton Tiger Cats got out of this deal. And in 2006 and 2007, was traded back to Saskatchewan in exchange for a 2007 sixth round pick. Well, that pick was actually used to select linebacker Adam Kenya, who didn't play a game at all for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Corey Holmes, 
Hey, Corey Holmes, there was a lot of expected for Corey Holmes in Ottawa, especially with the likes of Jesse Lumsden and potentially Josh Rannick and Jason Moss behind center. That didn't come to fruition, and a lot of that has to do with the offensive coordinator at the time, Joe Pow Pow, who pretty much didn't really know how to use and spread the ball around this time. I mean, Pow Pow's best days were in the 80s, maybe in the early 90s. The football world and CFL as we know it actually passed him by decades ago. Joe Pow Pow didn't know how to use him, so Hamilton said, hey, let's trade him back. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats traded Corey Holmes and their seventh, their fifth round pick in 2007 in 2007 to the Saskatchewan Rock Riders back. Now, people are saying, hey, this trade happened in 2007. Why, what, why, what happened with the fifth round pick? Well, it wasn't actual, the actual selection. It was actually the player that they selected in the fifth round. That player was receiver Chris Getzlaff. Chris Getzlaff and Corey Holmes go back to Saskatchewan in exchange for Jason Armstead. I told you that was going to work out for Saskatchewan on this side. Corey Holmes actually doubled his, his production in 2006 and 2007 with the Hamilton Tiger Arts in 2008. At, in 2007, after the 07 season, Corey Holmes decided to retire from football and he retired as a Grey Cup champion. Gets left? Well, he didn't get his first chance until 2009 after injury injuries were a concern. It was only twice that Chris Getzlaff got over a thousand yards receiving. The first was in 2011 and the second was in 2013. Being released by the club after 2016, he signed on with the Edmonton Football Club and signed actually back a one-day contract to actually retire as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and rightfully so. People will say that the Saskatchewan management actually bent over Hamilton management during this time and to make matters worse, it actually got better for Saskatchewan because during this time there was an actual other trade. I won't go into detail because it has nothing to do with this trade tree, but it actually makes part of the building blocks of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders dynasty. In the January of 2007, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders sent quarterback Rocky Butler a second round pick and a fifth round pick in 2007 in exchange for Wayne Smith, DJ Flick, and a second round pick in 2007. Saskatchewan Rough Riders called Hamilton very good competitive team on the field, off the field. They call Hamilton their bitch. There's no easy way to say it, to go about it. They, Hamilton just got messed around with by Hamilton on and off the field. And what makes matters worse, or better I guess in this case for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, is that yeah, in six years the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won two great cups, one in 2007 and 2013. And because of the building blocks that they had, they actually had opportunities to win two more in 2009 and 2010. Yeah, we could talk about the 13th men, but the fact that they were there twice is its amazing. This is how you create a great trade tree, and it almost got significantly better for Saskatchewan. That's how you create a dynasty, is you have, you collect assets, and you manage them, manage them well, almost to perfection. And sometimes you just, you're not done. You have to make other trades to make sure that, hey, we're going to be a competitive football team for years to come. And aside from 2011, they were. That'll do it for this week's video. If you liked what you saw, and if you have any questions or you think I left anything out, hit the comment button below. If you really liked what we saw, hit subscribe. We've got more content coming up. Free Agent Frenzy is coming through to the CFL as I'm recording. It's actually next week. Tony and I, we're going to actually be hitting out with a podcast this Sunday, and hopefully we'll be out before Free Agent Frenzy. Tell all your friends and see if there's any more content that you like. And if you have any future trade tree suggestions, hit them up on Twitter. I could be reached at Rouge Daltz. My podcast could be reached at Rouge Radio. And of course, this video is powered by the Canadian Football Podcast Network. It can be followed at CF Pod Network on Twitter.